Welcome back. WebLogic RESTful Management Services provide a comprehensive public interface for configuring, monitoring, deploying, and administering WebLogic server in all supported environments. In this video, we will explore WebLogic RESTful Management Services. Before we proceed further, if you are new to my channel, don't forget to check out my channel for more interesting videos related to WebLogic administration and SOA development. So let us begin with the architecture. In this diagram, you can see the basic architecture where client make a REST request from browser or any other REST client. At least admin server should be up and running to make this work. From WebLogic 12.2 versions, RESTful management services are enabled by default. So let us see how to enable if it is not already. So we are inside our admin console and you will have to go to domain. And here in the configuration general, you will have to go to advanced. And in the advanced properties, when you scroll down, you will find enable RESTful management services. So if it is not enabled, you'll have to take the lock and enable it and it will require server restart. But as I mentioned for 12.2 later releases, it is by default enabled. So we don't have to do anything here. So first we will try to invoke a get request from the browser and list all the server's health. So this is the URL for that. And once you hit this URL, you will be getting one prompt from the browser to enter username and password. So here I am entering the username password and you can see we have got the response in the HTML format. Now you can pass one more parameter that is format equal to full. So you can see the WebLogic version is 12.2.1.4 and you are also getting the heap uh, details here. So whatever server is up, we can see the details for that server. You can specifically get the detail for a specific server for that you will have to mention the server name so let's try to invoke it for the osb server one and you can see we have got a xml response for this and just for osb server one we have uh, details like health uh, cluster information machine information and information related to heap socket etc Similarly, you can invoke endpoint to get the details for cluster. So this is the endpoint for that. And you can see we have two clusters in our machine. So let's try to get the details for OSB cluster by hitting this URL. And again, you can see we have XML format information for the cluster. Now let us try to hit this uh, endpoints in the post main. So this is our postman. You can see this is our endpoint. And uh, if you are not mentioning any header here, uh, we should get the HTML response. So let's try to hit this. Uh, before that, you will have to also mention username password in the authorization. So we have already mentioned username password here. Let's hit this endpoint from the post. So here in the row you can see we have got a response in the html you can also see the formatted response in the pretty tab and you can see we have an admin server which is running with the ok health and similarly we have osb server which is running with ok health and rest of the servers are down let's say you don't want to get the response in html format and you want to get it in the xml format you can add this header that is accept and here we are mentioning application slash xml so we'll get the response in xml format so let's try to hit this endpoint and you can see now we got the response in xml format similarly you can also get the response in json format so for that you'll have to mention json and you can see now we have received the response in json format let's try to hit one more endpoint uh, for the application and you can see the method type is get so we are just retrieving the information for the applications and you can see we have got a response for the application so whatever applications are there 
we have the name of application type of application state and help so these many applications we have again you can get the specific information for a specific application so for that the url will be slash application name so let's try to hit that and you can see we have got more information for this specific application now let us try to hit uh, this url in the browser so this time we are hitting the url for sample web app and you can see we have got the response in xml format so here you can see completed request uh, is equal to 2 so we'll try to open that uh, portal and see whether this data is getting updated or not so this is our sample web app uh, and uh, now we will refresh our page again and you can see this uh, details are updated now so this is able to monitor the number of requests uh, we have for this sample web app similarly we can see an example for data source as well so you can monitor data source from rest based uh, apis and uh, here we have got the response in html format so these are the list of data sources we have in the domain and you can see if it is running or not and you can also determine the type and the target of that data source from here and uh, as we have seen earlier you can also list uh, a specific data source so let's try to list wls schema data source and uh, we have specific information for that data source here You can also invoke RESTful management service using curl and the commands mentioned here returns server states. So in the command we can see minus V option that is for verbose. Here we have mentioned username password. In the header you can see we have accept parameter where we are mentioning whether we should get the response in JSON format or XML. So you can specify that here. Here we are specifying the method that is get and here we have our endpoint. So this is relative path, this is fixed path and this is our admin server host and uh, admin server port. You can also see that there are two commands. The first one is legacy uh, which is still working uh, due to the backward compatibility. And this command uh, is here which we use in the latest version of WebLogic. And here you can see the response for the curl command. So here we have our JSON response, which is similar to what we have seen in the browser or the postman. So let us go to our command line and see how it works. Let us try to hit the curl endpoint. So this is the parent endpoint for the server uh, status endpoint. Let's try to hit and see what it returns. So this is the output of this endpoint. You can see the connection was established successfully to 7001. And this is our endpoint and this is the method. And here we have protocol details. Here we have base64 format uh, authorization. And uh, you can see we have this header uh, which is application slash JSON. HTTP 200 OK means it was successful and we got the response from the API. And if you scroll down, you can see the response where we have different different attributes that is active server count, production mode, active thread count, etc. And if you scroll further down, we have list of links here. So this is the parent link of the URL we just hit. And the rest of the links are the child links under this URL you can see. So by referring the number of links we have here, you can use the API. So we are going to use uh, this latest slash servers API after uh, this one. So let's try to hit this now. And again, you can see once we hit this endpoint, uh, we are getting the parent and the child details. So inside servers, you can again go to specific servers like admin server, uh, OSB server 1, SOA server 1, etc. And if you scroll up, you will see the details for the health of servers, whatever is running. And uh, 
whatever is down you will be able to see the reason or the state of the server now let us try to hit the legacy endpoint and we should get the similar sort of results for this one and you can see we have json format uh, response here where we have server name state and the health in json format we can also hit the endpoint to get the specific server details uh, like osb server 1 so it will only return details for the osb server 1 so let's hit this one and uh, here you can see we have details for osb server 1 one thing to note is that uh, we are getting this response in json format because uh, as we discussed earlier it is application slash json so let's try to hit this endpoint with application slash xml and see what is the response so this time we are going to hit this endpoint with application slash xml for osb server 1 and here we are using our legacy endpoint so the response we received is xml format response and here you can see for osb server 1 we have the state that is running health that is okay and you can also see cluster information and rest of the details like heap information or os details so based on your requirement you can get the response from this api either it can be a json xml or html format and then you can parse this response and utilize it for your monitoring purpose or any other developments now based on the api response we know that the osb server 2 is not running so we'll try to start it using rest api so for that you can run curl command where we are trying to start osb server 2 and for this one you'll have to mention post method and also note that this request is synchronous request so till our server is start it is going to wait uh, for it so you can see our server 2 has been started uh, successfully and let us try to verify this and you can see our server 2 has been started now we'll try to stop the server asynchronously so this is the curl command to stop the server asynchronously and for that you'll have to mention detach equal to true so it is not going to wait till the server is stopped it is just hit and come out from the command and uh, as we have seen earlier it is post method and uh, for that you'll have to mention shutdown instead of start so let's try to hit this and uh, it should stop osp server 2. so you can see we have come out from the command and our request has been accepted and you can see here we have http 202 instead of 200 so let us try to verify an admin console and see whether our server 2 is going down or not so let's refresh this page and you can see our server is shut down now you can also list the server logs uh, using rest api so this is the curl command for that one so here we are going to list osb server 1 logs so it will list all the kind of logs uh, that is http access logs server logs or uh, any other logs and then we can select type of logs and see those logs so first try to list all the types of logs here and uh, you can see in the response we have received http access logs server logs jms logs etc and now we will try to list our server logs so let's do it so for that the call command is osb server one logs and then you'll have to give server log if you want to list http access logs you can mention http access logs here and the request type is get so let's try to hit this one you can see we are getting huge response uh, out of that api call and you can also limit uh, this response by mentioning one more parameter uh, let's try to see that parameter and here you can see we have mentioned the max result equal to 5 so it will only list last 5 logs uh, from the server logs so we have received the response and you can see we have 5 items uh, it means 5 context ids 
and uh, those are five recent logs which we have in the server using restful management services you can also manage session you can start edit or activate the session so let's try to uh, create one session so this is the curl command to start edit uh, you can see we are inside change manager and then start edit and this is the post method so let's try to hit this one and we have got uh, http 200 and our session has been started uh, let's verify this in weblogic console so if you refresh this page you will be able to see that we have taken the session here and we can also activate the changes using activate so let's do it our change has been activated and let's refresh our admin console again and you can see we have activated the changes as i mentioned earlier if you want to see what are the options you have for the api you can use get call so let's see what uh, operations we can do inside change manager uh, we can try to hit this endpoint with get method so let's hit this and you can force resolve self resolve activate start edit cancel edit there are multiple options you can use under this hierarchy it is worth noting that the rest resources are protected resource and can be used via specific roles so to access rest resources we must be one of admin deployer monitor or operator roles so if you want to perform get operation you can perform whatever roles you have uh, with monitor operation also you can get the details from the rest api but if you want to perform post operations then you should have a specific uh, roles uh, like to add update delete or invoke you should be a admin and uh, if it is related to deployment or server start stop you can have uh, deployer or operator roles respectively so that's it for this video in this video we have seen the importance of uh, restful management services we have seen how to invoke a restful api from browser or a rest client and we also covered uh, how to invoke restful management services from the command line using curl command I have added all the commands and links uh, in the git so you can refer that from the description. If you found this video helpful please like my video, subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for the further notification and don't forget to leave a comment so that I can bring up uh, different different topics for you. Thank you.